less product, the more lateral I go. So four vertical injections, the rest I do with just a few horizontal ones, building up the lateral tubicles. I try to get as much 3D projection of the lip because I'm just like Steve, I'm not 100% fan of that completely flat profile lip. So let's start with the famous Julie Horn lips. You know, what, what, what are you actually doing? And let's just keep this to sort of, you know, volume, technique, what needles, what product you like. And, you know, if you could relate it to the anatomy, because this is important where I think some of your philosophies are slightly different. So, if, you know, if you take us through that sort of stepwise um, approach, Julie. Yes. Yeah, so... I mean, like I said, no lips are the same. They are like a fingerprint. So of course the technique is not 100% the same in all patients either. Um, but uh, often if, I mean, I can appreciate so many shapes, sizes, um, you know, when it comes to lips, different ratios. But if I have to choose a favorite shape amongst female women, and then that shape can also vary, of course, mm -hmm. But that is to create that vertical height in the medial portion of the lips within the medial canthus and alar line i do like to increase the height it's not uh, lifting like steven said we can't lift the lip with filler but by injecting um i do in average four vertical injections on each side starting at the gk point so four four and four, four lateral to the midline fascia. So I don't pierce through the midline fascia in any way. Mm -hmm. um, those four vertical ejections, I am um, below the white roll. So I'm all, always injecting only in the red component of the lip. So I'm below the white roll. I'm above the fascia in the wet dry junction. And I'm just in front of the orbicularis oris muscle, which is more or less a closed compartment of the lip. Mm -hmm. And then I inject my, what I call fences, just to not call it tenting like everyone else, gives support. It's like a, a line that gives support under the white roll and above the fascia in the wet dry junction that can help expand the lip a little bit in height. Yeah. So that's usually what I do within the ALR line, just because I think that shape is the most feminine feature in a female face. But mm -hmm. then I might have a patient that don't like that. They, no, don't touch my cupid's bow. I want a fuller lower lip. So, I mean, it's individual treatments always and assessments. Yeah. But in my beautification technique and up the, amongst the demographics of my patients, that's what most of them are asking for. Mm. So you will get the height and the dip definition in the same um, when you do these four injections. And then I'm just less product the more lateral i go so four vertical injections the rest i do with just a few horizontal ones building up the lateral tubicles i try to get as much 3d projection of the lip because i'm just like steve i'm not a hundred percent fan of that completely flat profile lip so i really love to build up some pillows of the tubicles especially of the lower lip so if they have a more pronounced or more um, projected upper lip I try, of course, not to give more projection or volume of the upper lip. Then I try to really work more with the lower lip tubicle for a, a profile balance. When it comes to product choice, rhyology for me is very important. I choose the product um, depending on the patient's lip tissue, and that can vary a lot. So I usually have a scale. You have loose lip tissue on one end, and you have firm lip tissue on the other end. And the loose lip tissue is this very difficult lips to treat they have a lot of pockets and empty compartments and tunnels and we do know that fillers spread to areas where there is least resistance so often when you put the bevel in a loose tissue lip and you start injecting slowly you can see how the filler travels through these empty channels can start building up some volume in one place and yeah so these types of lips are very difficult so Loose lip, lip tissue, I choose a soft, very forgiving uh, filler with high tissue integration. And I never touch the borders or anything. So I, my main goal is to give the lips a nice and smooth uh, texture and to fill out these empty compartments. 
to do the definition and shaping I rather do in a second session when the lips are healed, then I can use a little bit more G prime into my product to be able to try to manipulate the tissue a bit. That's when I do the shaping. So that's for the loose tissue. But if you are in the middle of the scale, not very loose, not very firm, then I like to use a medium G prime product with tissue integration. I like having product that integrates with the tissue because lips are such an animated area and we want the patients to look natural in the expression as well. Um, and the firmer the lip tissue, if we need to do some kind of tissue manipulation, if the patient would like to improve some asymmetries, well, the firmer the tissue, the more in G prime I choose to go up because the tissue needs that support to be able to manipulate. If they have an M shape that they would like to improve. Some patients love their M shape, which is great, but I also have a demand of patients that would like to correct it. That was awesome. Can I pin you down to what products you, you were sort of referencing where you said a medium or a higher G um, prime? For the loose lip tissue lip, when I say a forgiving soft filler that with high tissue integration, that would be for me uh, with the portfolio I'm working with, Rescue Lane Refine. Mm -hmm. I do have a similar product from another brand, from Tioxan. You have the RHA2 is quite similar to Rescue Lane Refine when it comes to, to the rheology there. If you are in the middle of the scale, not very loose, not very firm, when I'm talking about a medium G prime product, that would be Restylane Kiss for me. And then the firmer the tissue, the more G prime, then I tend to go to Restylane D prime. In some rare cases, especially amongst male lips, if they have very firm tissue, um, and I do want to do some tissue manipulation, I use, uh, sometimes I can use classic Restylane Nasha. And I'm assuming you're only limiting yourself to a maximum of one mil per session, maybe less? Maybe much less, yes. I yeah. mean, the average amount, it's all depending on the lip, the size of the lip, the natural size. I mean, the bigger area we have to work on, the more product we will need. So if you have very thin lips, a short mouth, I mean, sometimes I can't fit more than 0.2 milliliters maybe in the first session. Yep. Because I don't like to overexpand the tissue because there I think we have can have the issue with migration over time. If you have like big, huge, you know, lips that have been deflated over time, think Angelina Julie, deflate a lot of empty pockets. These types of lips, when you start injecting this smooth, forgiving, soft filler, the lips, they like... <sighs> Just like a sponge, they can eat the filler. Yeah. So in some cases, sure, I can use more products on specific type of lips. But in average, I rarely inject more than 0.8 in one session, often even less than that. Yeah. And I remember from our previous podcast, you said you don't like decanting or, or using BD needles. You, you stick to no. the needle that you're given by the manufacturer. I do. Yep. I'm very used to it. Thanks so much for watching the podcast clip. You can listen to the whole audio episode of the podcast on your favorite podcast app on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And please also leave us a review on the podcast app. If you like what we do, please smash the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when we release new content.